Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations, and in this video, I want to show y'all how to make your very own copper electroformed donut beads, uh, where the core is made out of polymer clay. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> For this project, I am using a donut that I made with basic Sculpey, like just the white stuff, super soft, super sticky, perfect for this. Um, just shaped it in this mold. There will be links down in the video description below um, to just about everything I'm using here, so hopefully that'll point you in the right direction if you want to get your own. Now, normally I'd use some cornstarch or water to repel and just kind of get it out of the mold, but you can bake it in the mold. Just keep in mind that over time, it's going to make your mold darken and become kind of brittle a little bit. This mold is like, gosh, six or seven years old, and I've baked it loads of times, um, but it's just not quite as supple and nice as it was from the beginning. But um, I bake it at 275 for about 45 minutes, um, but you could bake it for just like 10 or 15 minutes, then pop the... Uh, the clay pieces out and bake them for the remaining you know 30 or so minutes uh it's mostly i just i you know if you're trying to unmold it they can become distorted especially with such a soft clay so that being said we're going to go through and here i have just some graphite paint it's a conductive paint and you can see i've got it all over my fingers <laughs> um and i'm going to do a quite generous layer it sticks really really well to the polymer clay so really only two coats are needed if that I, I do like I, I'd rather be more generous with it than too stingy and end up having problems during the electroforming process so as a result of that so and um, I purchased this but you can actually Jason Welsh I believe his name is I'm really bad with names has a really great video and um, instructions in his book about electroforming on how to mix up your own and I really recommend that because you can buy powdered graphite um, as like a machine lubricant kind of like it like a, a non-liquid lubricant um, and then just mix it with water or uh, Jason recommends Mod Podge which works out really well because it gives a nice like stick to it um, but yeah getting some nice coverage you see my, my fingers pick up quite a bit so I'll, I'll paint the front just setting it off to the side and then here I have one that I had painted the front already and then I'm going to go through and I'm going to paint the back the back side also I did any sanding and prep and getting it to be just like how I want it before doing the graphite because the more we have it like how we want our final piece to be now the less sanding and buffing and polishing and shaping we're going to have to do once it has the layer of copper on there so just going through, yep, covering that, doing a second coat where my fingers had picked up, oh, there goes the kitty, some of the paint initially. And then I'm going to let this, I'm going to throw it on the floor, um, and then I'm going to let it completely dry uh, before meeting you guys over in the, in the lab for electroforming. Usually I'll wait like about an hour and it'll be completely dry even with a very thick coat. So we have all of our donut beads that we want to electroform covered up in the graphite paint. And now here I have about two and a half feet of 24 gauge bare copper wire. And I'm going to be focusing here on the center part where I've got the ends met up. And I'm just going to start in the middle and make a fold. And it's going to be about three fingers long. <clears throat> then three finger long, about that far still. Fold. What I'm making here is a little rack that we will be able to hang our donuts on. Bending, bringing it out, putting a bend in it, bringing it out, putting a bend in it. 
And I actually think we can probably put a little twist here on these guys just to keep it joined together up there at the top. There's the cat attacking something again, <laughs> as the kitty do. So just twisting. Feel free to use your pliers if you're following along with me. Oops. Yeah, pliers will be a good idea right here, I think. There we go. <laughs> Getting that nice and secure, so just pinching and twisting the together. So I'm going to bend right here. I think I'm just going to do one more. I know, kitty. She's very rambunctious today. <laughs> it's hard being a kitten, but no sympathy from anyone. Okay, so bent that around. Gonna pinch that. And just twisting around a few times. So now I'm just gonna fold this into a bit of a box shape. I'm actually gonna have this one come around and meet right here. Stop that kitty. And twisting these together. And so now we can take this and just using our finger or pliers if you like, bending into little hooks. And I'm going to be submerging this into our tank. I'll probably pinch these in a little bit more. Give it... Because I don't want them touching each other, but... Um, I also need it to fit into my electroforming tank. So now we can take these and just kind of settle them on there, twist it around. <laughs> Excuse me. Please pardon my sniffles. Apparently, I'm allergic to everything. <laughs> and just hanging them on there, bending that little tab around so it'll hold. Putting that on there. And so my tank is deep enough that I should be able to take this and submerge it and then just hang these two guys in up above uh, there in my old style like percolator coffee pot um, that has enough depth that I should be able to do all of that. So I'm going to make the two little hooks to hang these guys and then I'll meet you guys over in the lab. Hey guys, so I am back over here with this little almost mobile of polymer clay donuts that I've covered in the graphite paint. Um, and Kelly, one of my friends here on YouTube, had recommended to me to have my rectifier go ahead and up my ampage and then increase my temperature to around 25 degrees Celsius. So I've gone ahead and done that. So yeah, set to 25. Um, and it's just kind of knocking about there. It is, keeps the water, it, it feels like just slightly warm. Um, and I'm doing that because it is, it is quite cold in here and I just, I've, you know, it may not make any difference for you where you are. Um, but for me, uh, I've had the, how cold my house gets, um, affect the way my resin sets up. So I really didn't want to risk... Um, you know, it messing with my electroforming. So I'm just attaching, you know, getting these wires twisted together, making really nice full contact as much as possible. Um, and then I'm going to be bending these guys back down. I now have two quarts of electroforming solution into my container. So I'm going to see about just threading that. So I kind of have it threaded up and I'm going to just dip all this, get that completely submerged. The problem here with having so much, so many on here is um, trying to keep it from touching our anode because we want the electricity to have to flow through the copper sulfate solution to get to where it can deposit on the graphite 
I don't want them touching quite that much. So let's go ahead and hook up and see how that's going. Cool. So I'm at 0.3 volts and 1.15 amps. It's going to give us a little bit more texture, but it plates up so much faster. Um, and I think on these donuts, I'm okay with some texture. You, we could do a little bit lower, so I'm actually going to bump it down to like maybe 0.9. That way we don't get as much texture. And then I'm going to come back and check on this in about an hour. And also just a quick little sneak peek to a side project that I've got going on. My very first soldering project. So you can actually see my join right there. I need to like sand that down a little bit better. But um, I soldered and to cover up the silver colored solder, I went ahead and electroformed it. And this was it in the bath. Now this was copper wire, 12 gauge copper wire, but it was in my electroforming solution for like maybe 30 seconds and it covered up the, uh, the silver on there. But I was gonna put it through my tumbler to work hard in it a bit. But it's very primitive looking pretty rough like but we all start somewhere and I'm starting here and I'm loving it I'm so happy um to be doing work like this so uh yeah I'll meet you guys back here in about an hour to check on how these guys are are electroforming up Alrighty, so it has been an hour and let's check up and see how this is doing we're riding at 0.2 volts and 0.97 amps switching that off Removing our diode. Oh, now that's looking pretty nice. Now you can see here, we're starting to get a little bit of copper accumulation on all of our donuts. So I'm just going to submerge that back in. And I think I'm actually going to crank the amps up a little bit more. <clears throat> because I'm... Oh, I forgot to put that back on. Because I don't mind at all... Um, <coughs> excuse me having a little bit of texture on these guys switching that back on okay i'm actually going to bump it up to 1.5 which brought us up to 0.3 volts up here i don't really know how any of this works um <laughs> like honestly uh so i'll check back again in another hour okay so i missed the one hour mark switching that off it's been about two hours honestly um and switched off our power and we are gonna just pull this right out oh looky there now that's interesting now we're getting some some good coverage but it's still not all the way there yet so I'm wondering what I should do I guess we'll put it back in and leave it for a little while longer no real texture to speak of though I think this might just be the this is so far the biggest piece I have added um, to my electroforming solution so I think maybe that has something to do with it just submerging that right on back down in there wait before I turn the power back on you gotta attach my diode And then just switch it on, make sure. It's not wanting to, I think it's touching something in there. There we go. So we're riding at 0.2 volts and 1.01 amps. So I'm gonna leave this in for a while longer. Hey guys, so it is the next morning. We have been riding at 0.2 of a volt and 1.53 amps all night. I'm switching that off. Oh, there we are, okay. Because I was having, last I checked, we were having some pretty serious problems just getting even coverage on this, honestly. Um, so let me grab. that solution off a little bit. We've got some really like 
interesting texture going on here. But yeah, we were getting um, very much like this. Just it was not making even coverage. It refused. So this is super sparkly. Um, I think my acidity may be too high. I might need to add some distilled water. and take a look at these oh yeah all that sparkling hope that didn't no i didn't mind too bad now these definitely have some substantial weight to them now so yeah i'm gonna be getting a bottle or two of distilled water today to keep here in the lab um but we finally got coverage but you can see here on the back even there's like a little a little spot so I think what we'll do is um sand these down a little bit and uh, put on a little bit more graphite paint refresh our solution and then dip them back in <laughs> But yeah, I, the main thing that I don't like about leaving them in overnight is we do get the wire kind of stuck to it. And it took a little bit of copper with it. So, interesting experimentation for sure. I'm going to double check with my Jason Welsh book um, to see, because he's got like a little troubleshooting section on why it would be all sparkly and grainy like that I'm pretty sure it's because my acidic solution is too high but never hurts to double and triple check but so far though I do think that it is pretty cool <laughs> so we have taken our donuts out of the tumbler and not gonna lie they've been sitting here for a few days but so they've started to oxidize up a little bit but I want a really bold, dark oxidation on them. So what I'm going to do is use this XL gel. It's a liver of sulfur gel. <laughs> and I have as hot as it'll get come out of the tap. You don't want it like steaming or boiling or anything because then it's going to be releasing those toxic fumes. Um, though a face mask would be prudent because this stuff... The polite way of putting it is rotten farts, like, well, <laughs> rotten eggs. Um, I just, I think it smells like farts, like 100% those pupper farts. So we have, like, there was just three generous drops. Um, usually I have, here we are, just a bit of scrap wire. So just stir that in. Stir, stir, stir. Oh, my house smells so nice today. Smells like I've been feeding Randy deviled eggs. Okay, and already you can see, boom, that quick. And I have my donuts gathered up on another piece of wire here. This way I can do them all at once because I like to save up a bunch of projects to do all at once. Because if I'm going to mix up a batch, you know, liver of sulfur, it doesn't last forever once it's mixed. So I try to use it just as fresh as I can. And you can see they're oxidizing really nicely. And I like a very dramatic contrast between the, uh, you know, the low lights and highlights. So I'm just shake, shake, shake. I don't know if you need to agitate it that much. It just makes me happy. <laughs> so especially since they're all stacked together, I want to make sure that I'm getting that compound in between them. Now I have some water here with baking soda in it to neutralize the liver of sulfur and it's a bit gray because I accidentally rinsed out my graphite brush in it oh my gosh these guys are almost black this is perfect tick, tick, tick. and I'm just gonna leave that shake 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 leave that on there shake your options shake your options and now we can rinse and honestly, it's not smelling too strong today. It could be that I'm coming down with a cold. Perfect time to uh, do your oxidizing, though. So you can really see now. Like, these, you wouldn't even think that those were copper. They're so dark. I love it. Love that. 
And then I actually have another piece here that I want to dip while I'm at it. And this one I brought to just as high a polish as I, as I could with what I have on hand. Um, and I'm just going to dip this. It's a gift from my niece, actually. A Christmas present. So I'm going to just get that one oxidizing. And so you can see, I've just dipped it a few times. It's starting to oxidize a bit, but I'm going to set it on the outside of the container without rinsing. And also, I am gloved up because I am just sticking my fingers in the sulfur compound and all kinds of stuff. Don't don't rub it in your eyes. Like pra practice caution and safety way beyond what I am. Ah, there's the butt smell. <laughs> okay. So now we have our donuts, and I'm going to, where is that steel wool at? This is a size zero, zero, um, very fine steel wool. I am going to toss my respirator on for this though, because this stuff makes a bunch of little rotten fart, egg farts are one thing, steel wool particles our complete other. Not to mention the copper that we may end up like buffing off as well. Ooh. Oh, that is neat. <laughs> I love it. Oh. So you can see that it's starting to bring out yeah, not a whole lot though. Maybe if we take here, I have a bristle. Maybe this will brighten it up a little bit more. A little bit. Yeah, you can see that really brightened up the face of the stone. I imagine we could also use some of the finer grit sandpapers. Do I have some of that over here? Maybe. I thought I had a piece that I probably promptly lost. Oh, there it is. I was using this yesterday to sand down epoxy scope. Ooh, yeah. Now that sands, that takes a bit of the copper with it too, though. I don't want to remove as much texture. So that's a little bit of a strong, uh, removing a little too much for my taste for what I'm trying to do here. So I don't like a little elbow grease though. And I'm doing this in real time so that you guys can get a good idea of you know how much time and energy and effort is going into this. Now I'm not going to be polishing up, you know, all six of them by hand, real time with you guys. Unless you want me to. <laughs> you can leave a comment down below for that. Maybe uh, for one of the live streams, that might be fun. So, alright, I'm, I'm very, very pleased. I like how this is coming along. So, yeah, that's looking pretty cool, I think. Now, I do have something else that I want to experiment with, because I've been watching other people do their thing, you know, on uh, Lily Tree is probably one of my favorites to watch here on YouTube with her tutorials um, on how to, you know, uh, patina and, you know, oxidize and kind of, you know, do everything. Her tutorials are goals, like, she does such a good job. I'd recommend checking that out, but... I'm just experimenting for my own purposes. I'm going to put in this steel bristle rotary tool. So now I'm going to be putting my face shield on. Because 
eyeballs. Okay, so this is going to get pretty loud. I'm going to pop it into time lapse um, and just experiment a bit and we'll see how this works out. So that steel bristle uh, wheel really did a really good job of removing a lot of the black. But um, you know, it's something to keep in mind that just because that's kind of the kind of result that I got, you may have a different way to hand or you know a, a, a better or different technique than I do, and so you may not get the same results. So I really recommend to folks, especially since I'm still just learning, which <laughs> hopefully I'll always still be learning. Um, you know, go ahead and experiment and see what kind of results you get and what you think of it. But um, I'm going to come through now with a felt rotary wheel or a felt tip uh, thingy with some jeweler's or, uh, polishing compound, the red stuff, and see what kind of effect we can get with that. I don't know, maybe I didn't use it right, but this came out like darker than uh, than what it was before. So I'm going to see if I can't steel wool it up a little bit more. Ooh, though, it brings out the nice top shiny. Uh, experimentation, woohoo! But if y'all have preferred methods for polishing on a piece in this style with like a lot of texture, I'd love to hear from you guys. Because I don't know if it's apparent, but I'm not entirely 100% about what I'm doing. <laughs> so, I'm just kind of messing around and I love sharing my experiments with you guys because it's, I don't know, I feel like there's a lot to be learned with experimenting with how not to do things, but I'm pretty pleased with this. Hmm. All that nice texture and stuff. So I'm going to continue and do that on the rest of them. And then stay tuned for some different wire wrapping and or macrame or uh, tutorials in the future based on a, on these good guys as well as hey, put my mask off. <laughs> hey guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me for this tutorial. Um, like I was saying before, I decided to start de uh, accessorizing. Um, <laughs> If you uh, have requests for how would you like to see me set these? Do you want them to be set in chainmail? Do you want to see a wire wrapping tutorial or a macrame or beadwork? Or I'm really interested in hearing what y'all have to you know think about that. And then also keep an eye out if you're one of my uh, Patreon craft crate pledgers. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to start incorporating some different electroformed pieces into your craft kits. That way. Um, you can mess around with it too without having to do all of the so I, I'm so excited about like doing stuff like this but um that way you can get to play around with the electroformed stuff without having to actually do any electroforming uh, if that's not something that you're real interested in but you still want some of these beads but uh links are down below like I mentioned the different like Amazon uh, everywhere all, all the tools and materials that I'm using here I try to link uh, for you guys that way if you're like ooh, I need that <laughs> or just you know want to maybe google how it's supposed to be used <laughs> instead of how I'm using it um, if you have any questions comments or ideas though please do leave those down below uh, you can post things to my Facebook wall or tag me on Instagram if you'd like to share pictures of your work um, as well as you can post things to my patreon don't have to be a pledger or anything but the more you pledge the more you get um, but it's just it's a nice little kind of community over there where you can post pictures of your work and um, That's where every day I check my patreon first So you you're certain to hopefully I, I can't make promises But you're much more likely to hear back from me over on patreon than anywhere else honestly 
Um, but that being said, again, I do hope that this was helpful to you guys, even if just a little bit, but I'm really exciting going to, uh, excited going down this path of electroforming and, you know, metal smithing and stuff. So I'm even more excited to drag y'all down this rabbit hole with me. <laughs> so until next time, you guys, happy crafting. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs>